Okay, this problem, uh, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like a challenge. Uh, they put it in degrees, so that makes me feel pretty good. <clears throat> and they do say nearest tenth of a degree, which leads me to believe we may need a calculator here. We may or may not, I'm not sure, but make sure if you are using a calculator, it's in degree mode so you don't mess up uh, this problem at the very end. Um, what sticks out is I only have one trig function, it's cosine, and that's good. But my angles aren't equivalent. Here I have a double angle, and here I only have single angles. You have to be consistent throughout your problem when you solve trig functions. So you got to get rid of that double angle. So we got to get rid of cosine of two theta. Lucky for us, cosine of two theta, we have uh, a trig identity for that. In fact, we got three of them, which hopefully you memorized. If you didn't, I'll write them on the side. There's three versions of this. There's cosine squared minus sine squared. There's one minus two sine squared theta. And there's two cosine squared theta minus one. You could use any one you want, but if you use the wrong one, you're gonna have a lot more steps because all three of these versions of the identity are related by the Pythagorean identity, right? That relates sine squares and cosine squares Look at the rest of your problem. The rest of the problem is all written in terms of cosine. So pick the version that just has cosine. That's my, uh, save you a lot of time. So what am I doing? Everywhere I see cosine of two theta, I'm gonna replace it with this two cosine squared theta minus one. So you know, I'm gonna go quickly. You can always pause and rewind. That's the, the advantage of uh, doing some video math. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna substitute in two cosine squared theta minus one for cosine of two theta. And, and then I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna collect some terms just to save some steps. So here I got three cosine theta. Here I have a minus three, but of course if I bring that over, it becomes a plus three. So that gives me plus six cosine theta. So I took care of those guys. Here I have a four, here I have a minus one, but again, that minus one becomes a plus one when I move it left. I end up with plus five equals zero. Looks a little bit better, but still we got work to do. We should probably distribute that four and get eight cosine squared theta minus four plus six cosine theta plus five equals zero. And if you notice, it looks like I have a quadratic function, but it's quadratic in cosine theta. You know, this whole thing looks like a second degree, but instead of x's, I have cosine thetas. So again, I wanna set it to zero and put stuff in the descending order, just like I would a quadratic. So the next term would be the six cosine theta. And then I can collect these constant terms. Minus four plus five is a plus one. And then what you gotta do, gang, you gotta hope and pray that this thing is factorable, okay? Um, it's a quadratic. Uh, you can always try using the quadratic formula or look at the discriminant. I'm gonna just try to factor it and hope, hope this works out. And the reason I think it won't be that difficult is because of the one, right? A, a one here as the constant kind of locks you in. The only factors are one times one. And then what do I need to do? I got to, in the very beginning, I got to multiply to eight, but add up to six. That's kind of a no brainer to multiply to eight. Four times two will give you that. And that'll also add up to that six in the middle. And of course, to get cosine squared, it's just cosine times cosine. So that's an example of how you factor trig I guess you could call it a trig quadratic. I don't know what you call it, but that's what it reminds me of. And then if the signs are plus plus, these guys are also plus plus. So you're, you're combining here a lot of your algebra two and then what you already know about trig. Again, we have two things that multiply to zero. You can set each of those to zero. So you got four cosine theta plus one equals zero, two cosine theta plus one equals zero. That implies cosine is negative a fourth. 
this implies cosine is negative one half. I did two steps in one. I moved the constant over and then did the division problem. Um, and the right side of this is a memorized angle, right? We know that cosine uh, is a half. I got a real quick check. Degrees, right? So cosine is a half at 60 degrees. That's your reference angle, right? Remember, we used to call these theta sub reference. But for cosine to be negative, now you got to, you know, use your trigonometry now. If cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. So a 60 degree angle in quadrant two would be 120, right? Because that's 180 minus 60. And then in quadrant three, it's 180 plus 60, that's 240. So there's two solutions. <clears throat> now, negative a quarter, hey guys, that is not a memorized angle. That's okay. You have calculators, you have computers. You can do the inverse cosine or what we call the arc cosine. Type it in as is, it's the button that's attached you know, on a TI-84, it's right with the cosine button, just hit the second key. So cosine inverse of negative one fourth, and it's gonna dump me in quadrant two because cosine's negative in quadrant two. And in particular, I get 104.4, 104, I guess I should probably say approximately because this is an irrational number, 104.47, uh, actually if you round it off, actually I should see what we have to round to. Nearest tenth of a degree, tenth of a degree is one decimal place. So we look there, look to the next number, and of course that means round it up. So it'd be 104.5, and you got to be a stickler because you're doing this on a computer. So when you put your answer to Delta Math, if you don't round correctly, it knocks the whole question out. You get marked wrong. So you got to you got to be extremely accurate. Now, don't forget when you do these inverse trig functions, they'll only give you one value. Uh, it's up to you to find the other value. Of course, 104.5. Well, first of all, it's a radio station in Philadelphia, but that's that's not what's important. What's important is it's a second quadrant angle. And of course, where else is cosine negative in quadrant three? And it'd be 104.5 that way if I draw. And of course, it's 104.5 degrees less than 360 if you look at my diagram. So if I take uh, 360 and I subtract that 104.5, uh, what will I get? Boy, I should be able to do this in my head, but I'm just not up for it. <clears throat> I get 255.5 right there, 255.5. So that's my other angle. All right, so here's an example, <coughs> pardon me where you're actually gonna get four answers and I'll put them together over here. I have this, I have the two, what I call simpler angles or uh, memorized angles. And I have two that I had to get off the calculator, 104.5 and 255.5. So four solutions to this one. And honestly, it's, uh, you can't tell just by looking at it how many solutions you'll have. That's, that's one of the tougher parts of me write that a little better. That was 255.5. So you got to round correctly. It's a lot of work, guys. You got to do a lot of factoring. You got to know your trig identities. This is tough stuff, but hey, you signed up for honors. Aren't you happy with yourself? 